Um, we were just waiting a minute or two to see if Gil showed up. Greg is not going to attend. He's on vacation in another country. So do you want to start, Phyllis? Thank you. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Spectral Library Parso Tax Committee on June 24th, 2021. The time is 6.03. Is Ginger here? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Ginger. Can you? Hello. Yes, uh, committee member Grasso. Here. Committee member Kellogg. Committee member Lee. Yes. Committee member Pruitt. Chair Brinkerhoff. Here. So now, uh, Ginger, can you explain how the public who's probably not here, can participate in the evening's agenda? Yes, sure. Good evening, everyone. Viewers are welcome to provide public comment online through Zoom or by telephone at 669-900-9128. And the meeting ID is 949-617-86911 pound. If you are watching the meeting on Zoom and wish to provide public comment, please select the raise hand feature either on the bottom of your screen or through the participants icon. If you are participating by telephone and wish to provide public comments, please press star nine when the chair opens the public comment period. When it is your turn to speak, you will be notified that the host is inviting you to participate. You will need to press star six to unmute yourself. Once you are unmuted, you will have three minutes to provide your comments. Are there any amendments to the evening's agenda? Otherwise, we're going on to the regular meeting minutes from the last time. Does anybody have any questions on the minutes? No. My, uh, my only comment on the minutes, I would like to... Uh, Thank uh, uh, Greg for the suggestion of putting in the uh, previous fiscal year information. Uh, I think it was very helpful on the financial document. Okay, so shall we? Uh... Other than that, I move that we accept the minutes as submitted. All in favor? I guess it's just I'm in favor. Are you, Peter and Gail? Hi. Okay. Okay. Minutes are approved. Should I mark uh, Gail as the uh, second one to motion? Yeah. Okay. And then Ginger will call the roll. And there's no public comment, so we did we skipped that part because there's no public here. I mean, exactly. There are no attendees, and I will call the roll. Committee member Grasso. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> Committee member Kellogg. Committee member Lee. Yes. Committee member Pruitt. Chair Brinkerhoff. Yeah. I guess there's no public thing here, so now we're on to the review of the third quarter. I uh, guess um, no, no members from the public are in attendance. So Jinder will not read that whole thing. <laughs> and the chair has, is the chair closing public comment? Public comment is closed. Okay. So um, item three, review of the 2021-20, no, 2020-21 third quarter annual revenue and expenditure budget request report. I will be giving a presentation this time. I have a PowerPoint that will guide me through my comments. And then I also have the spreadsheet available um, to share my screen on that and after I share my screen on the PowerPoint. So um, just a sec while I share my screen. Uh, 
Can everyone see that? Yes. Cool. So yes. this, this again is the review of the third quarter library budget report um, for today. And today's the June 24th, June 24th, 2021. Uh, we do this quarterly. We bring this um, budget expenditure report to the committee. Um, the recommendation is that the committee receive the report and provide feedback. Uh, some background on this report. Um, this report gives year-to-date figures for the general fund and parcel tax. Uh, as of this report, 75% of the fiscal year has elapsed. Our spending overall is 66%. Uh, general fund is at 73% and parcel tax at 49. The, the difference is we had advised to, to spend more in general fund by finance and less in parcel tax because parcel tax can doesn't you, you uh, go time, away. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Will you Hello? count on the philosophy of the city to spend down the general fund before parcel tax? Uh, I'll have time for questions at the end, but yes, my last bullet point is Sorry. that we, that we, this has been the craziest budget year last two years in history, I think, in a recorded history, could be worse. But um, we went through periods of feeling like we had less general fund available, furloughs, um, budget freezes. And then um, at, at this point in the third quarter, we were told that there was actually more general fund available. And in order to sort of exercise fiduciary responsibility to, to retain parcel tax money because it rolls over to the budget, um, the parcel tax balance fund, I'm not, there's another word for that, but but because parcel tax doesn't, um, if we don't spend the general fund, it, it, it goes away. So that's the, the difference in this quarter as reflected. And there'll be more specifics on that a little bit, I think later in the presentation, but yes. Um, okay, thank you. You're welcome. The general fund is, is approximately 70% of the budget. The budget is roughly 4 million and it's about 3 million. Parcel tax is uh, roughly 29%, um, which is a, a little bit over 1 million uh, of, of the 4 million-ish. And the Friends of the Library provide about 1% of operating expenses. Uh, general fund revenue this, this year is um, about 18,000. That, that includes some limited fines payments and some uh, consortial money that we received from our uh, state library consortium. Uh, parcel tax revenue is, is around a million, as I mentioned, and that, that's classed as revenue because we collect it from people on their parcel tax. Uh, Friends of the library, we were expecting a contribution of 23,000-ish this year. Um, so into the details, uh, the highlights for the general fund, we, we're, we're underspent on um, high salaries and benefits. And we've had uh, a number of vacancies, uh, eight, eight total that, and we've been filling some of those recently, but as, as this, um, during this, when the third quarter happened, we had filled almost none of them, I believe. Uh, we spent more on extra hire to make up for it, uh, not having some regular hire people, a significant portion. Um, we're on track on building maintenance. Um, we haven't done a lot of improvement because we, we, we've been kind of focusing on just sort of maintaining um, the operation through the shutdown uh, opening for curbside about a year ago. And then uh, we opened for in-person services at the mall in April and at the downtown in Pickleweed June 1st. Um, we, we hadn't paid our quarterly uh, uh, utilities at the, po at the point when uh, the third quarter ended, so that's a little under. And as always, 
contract services are overspent as we pay a huge lump sum upfront to Marin Net. A shout out to digital services who are paying the scenic bill. That's our broadband internet connection funded by uh, the state library and the, the, the consortium called scenic, which is kind of a educational network that we participate in by virtue of being a public library. Um, internal service charges, what we sort of are charged by other departments, namely digital services and others are on target. Office expenditures underspent, books are overspent. And again, that's because we were looking at more of a bottom line budget this year. And we were advised by finance that we could overspend in certain categories. And the collections budget is sort of like one of the, or the most important in terms of our serving the public having collections available. And we had not been spending in this area for a huge portion of when we were shut down and engaged in curbside. It took us a while to kind of spool up our collection operation. We have uh, eliminated periodicals for the last year to save money um, and put that money into audiovisual. Uh, we, we are underspent somewhat in digital services because we're expecting more grant money from the state to come through. And then, uh, at, you know, that audio visual line looks overspent because we, we moved a significant portion of money from periodicals into audio visual. We are planning to bring periodicals back. Um, we've been doing a lot of training and instruction, so we're slightly over in that. The, the COVID shutdown and a subsequent um, conversion to curbside services has meant there's been a sort of renaissance of virtual training over the past year, and we've taken advantage of that. Um, and no one's been going to any kind of in-person conferences. So, you know, we've also saved on subscriptions and dues for professional associations because most of the reason that we belong to those is that we get a lower rate when we go to conferences. And then we haven't been doing almost any credit card transactions with the public because people haven't really been paying fines because fines were in abeyance during the shutdown, though there, you know, people still pay small amounts. And um, they're also able to pay for lost items, but generally our credit card fees have been way under. So on to the parcel tax. Uh, the county administrative fee is underspent, um, but and it shouldn't go over budget. That's what the county charges us to, to, to kind of collect this fee on the county's um, kind of bill. And anyone that's looked at their county parcel, their, their tax will see this as a subset. So it's passed through from the county and they charge us on that. Uh, we haven't been doing any programming in person, so supplies have, have been way uh, underspent. Again, in, in parcel tax, we have a huge amount of collection money, and we've spent all of it and maybe a little more um, in general fund. But in, in, in parcel tax, we've tried to sort of husband or, or to, to kind of, you know, maintain or, or, or you know, not spend as much in order to kind of save it for a, a day when we have less general fund. And again, periodicals uh, is also a budget line in parcel tax. And we got rid of periodicals for the duration of, of last year as a savings. Uh, again, digital branch resources are somewhat um, underspent um, and, and we've spent less on technology, uh, supplies for 3D printing, um, we've, we've looked at upgrading our 3D printers, but we will not be doing it in this fiscal year. Uh, the same on tech, tech uh, training and instruction, because we've been spending um, in a conservative way for the parcel tax money. We have spent a huge amount of money comparatively for our new library conceptual design cost. Uh, and we're 
we've we've almost been billed for that entire eighty one thousand, and that project is coming to a close in the near future, almost completely done. So, comments and questions. If uh, you would like me to bring up the budget. Um, spreadsheet and make it really large on the screen, I can do so. Um, can I ask a question? Go for it. Uh, just number eight, the new library conceptual design. Is this, uh, this is for the theoretical new library that's going to happen? Is that right? Yes, since I've been here the last five-ish years. I start When I started, we were doing a needs assessment study with group four art, architects. And then, then we did a new library facilities planning process with Nolan Tam that looked at three locations in the city and right. looking at three options for each of those. And this latest conceptual design process is for a building that would combine a library and community center in Albert Park. And the council wanted us to come back to them with what that would look like and a cost to compare to the previous uh, study that had also included the Carnegie location in terms of it being remodeled, re redesigned. Yeah. So yes, that is what that is. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, the sun is coming in weird on me now, but uh, and 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 in the past study in this, the, the um, parcel tax, Um, fund balance. So, so over the life of measure C and measure D, there were slight amounts of money that didn't get spent and it's put into a fund balance. And that, that was originally used for a previous study, but then moved to the, to the sort of capital set aside as a better spending because there was a capital set aside for measure C that capped out about 500,000 and then was spent down from the previous study and they were spending more of that, if I understand correctly. Is that correct, Ginger? For the for the new library, the do the, the conceptual design process in Albert Park. Oh, right. okay, yes. So, so yes, uh, there was a set aside amount that was reduced, and uh, um, the fund balance uh, therefore increased. Uh, so the money that was used for the previous study uh, did come out of that fund balance. I mean, the uh, the set aside. I'm sorry, the set aside. And for the, the current study, that's coming out of the, the capital set aside also, right? Um, well, well, there was no budget for it uh, uh, that was uh, placed in the, I mean, there was nothing placed in the budget, uh, but yes, it will come out of uh, that. Uh, we, we can do the same thing we did last time. We can, uh, yeah. we can decrease the uh, uh, set aside and, and that'll in, uh, increase the fund balance. Yeah, that was what my understanding was. And the, the reason being that the capital set aside the planning for the building is considered capital costs. And so we're even that much closer because conceptual design is kind of very much closer to planning than the previous study. So yes, I over I over answered that, but that's all the info I have. <laughs> so, so I kind of forget, I'm really, really sorry. This this building site has not been approved by City Hall yet though. They, they have to approve the plan and vote on it or something, is that right? Yes, yes, the, 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 this, unlike other conceptual designs, which might happen after a decision had been made and even funding yeah. had been, that none of those have happened. Okay, and yeah. are the plans finished yet though? The, the design? Uh, we're pretty close to the end. We've been really on on time and um, on budget, it's the budget, but we had projected presenting it to council in June, but we're gonna give ourselves a little longer, like maybe September. Uh, and so it, you should be seeing um, a staff report that I need to write, um, coming to uh, the city council in the early fall, including the consultants presenting, generally that's what happens. And then council will be faced with the, with the complex decision. But yes, it, it, it hasn't been, to council yet, but it's the, the studies and the pictures and the and the members of the library board, the friends of the library, mm -hmm. the library foundation, the, the parks and rec commission, 
city staff and there's a uh, and, and city council were part of a group that participated in a process to come up with and react to conceptual plans, which will be showcased for the public at that council meeting. Uh, pictures, I, lights, you know, uh, trees, very nice. <laughs> I have a, a question. Uh, this design that they're looking at, they are just looking at alternatives for that location. But in Correct. fact, the location has not yet been chosen, has it? Correct. Uh, yes, uh, that's exactly what Gail had pointed out. Yeah. Uh, the the direction from the previous council was to come back with 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 this option so they could compare to what we had on the Carnegie. That's almost verbatim, but not exactly. Do we don't have. Do we have something on Carnegie? <laughs> um, we we do, not to this level, but but um, that that will that's what I sort of alluded to that it's sort of a complex decision. Um, I saw Peter with his hand raised. Um, yes, uh, colleagues and Henry, um, is someone keeping a running total of how much has been spent on all these uh, consultants to date and design options, etc.? Is it uh, you know eaten away quickly at the uh, set aside from parcel C and other uh, and parcel D? You keep spending more money on all these, uh, uh, um, you know, the needs assessments, conceptual design, etc. Is there a running total on that? Because that, you know, we're probably well over a half a million dollars, correct? Uh, I I would say under, but yes, we are keeping track. Um, I can share my screen so we can take a little snapshot of, of what our resources are. Maybe just, you know, a little bit of here. Here we go. Um, I think uh, ballpark, I, I'm not sure what the group four study was, but um, I think the combined previous two studies are more in the 250 range. But we're looking at a capital set aside um, that right now is in the more 350 that will be, you know, down to two something. Um, we have a healthy fund balance and we have some memorial funds um, that, that are, you know, all those are a little bit over $2 million. And, and the, we're looking at a $50 million building-ish. So, so, I mean, it's not un, uncommon in, 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 and I think unexpected to spend, you know, the, you know, a quarter of a million in terms of studying because we want to kind of make the best decision. But I can see your concern, and 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 I don't see that there's going to be a lot more studies before a decision is made. But but it is kind of like a lot of money to spend, and we want to make the right decision. Well, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. But the process has been taking what five years now, and moving along ever so slowly, or perhaps. Is speeding up. I don't know. I would say we're 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 sort of anyway, accelerating. Yes, it always takes keep a your long eye time. On it, my yeah. friend. Okay. So uh, good. This, it, does this have to be for the design review board before the city would vote on it? That's a Susan question. <laughs> All right. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Yeah. So the next step would be presenting the results of the library and community center conceptual design process to the city council because it represented and had, uh, I should say representation from all the different advisory boards on that working group that it would go right to the city council for basically to be pre presented. What Henry and I are gonna be working on is a staff report that helps to guide the city council as to the next steps. So the conceptual design is wonderful by itself, but really the, the question that's being posed to the city council is A, which site do you want city staff to pursue? And number two, what is the funding strategy that you'd like also the city to pursue to fund it? So those questions have yet to be answered. So as you mentioned earlier, the site has not been decided. The city council in October of 2019 had asked city staff to get more information about the Albert Park site since it was 
basically a brand new idea and that there was 20 years of planning efforts on the Carnegie. So they felt that they had sufficient information on the Carnegie site, but nothing on the Albert Park site, except literally the idea from the last planning study. So that's why the conceptual design process was implemented. So based on this, we're hoping the city council has enough information to tell city staff which site they would like the city to pursue as well as a possible study for you know, funding strategies, which sometimes includes hiring a consultant to do um, surveys, you know, community surveys in regards to bonding and thresholds and you know, things like that. Um, but no decision has been made yet. That's kind of the next step we're hoping for. So, so to am answer, I answer commi committee member Lee's um, question that he posed, we're hoping to get to the decision of which way are we going on the path. So all the additional um, investment is directed towards the future goal of building a main library. Good, good. So, so worrying, uh, I'm worrying way too early about the, the lack of personnel that's appearing on the, the, the planning commission and the DRB, right? That, that by the time we get there, they should have those positions filled, I guess. Are you referring to current vacancies on those boards or commissions? Yeah, they're posting these, these oh, spots. Yeah. We're fine. Yeah, we're, it's, all, it's all good. We, we're doing the same for the library board, um, this okay. particular board. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, another fact related to my budget presentation that I, that I wanted to mention is just to, to, to remind everyone that we have a cost of living in, increase that's built into Measure D. And this year it increased by the maximum of 3% allowed according to the uh, Consumer Price Index. So that's roughly 30,000 additional um, in potential funding which is also always balanced by, by the number of people taking exemptions, which um, two, three years ago it, it rose and then it dipped two years ago and it rose a little this year. But that that's the sort of constant balance between what if you if if a person receiving the exemption sells a house, um, then the new owner if they're not over sixty five doesn't get the exemption, and then people that are becoming 65 or older that are taking the exemption is is you know that much less so it's kind of balancing out in a way but the rate of people selling and not and no longer being eligible is less than the rate of people just aging to 65 and taking the exemption. and shout out to Jinder for being the best customer service provider in helping people get these exemptions <laughs> yes we were very, very helpful to people um, okay. I, I have a couple, couple questions on your uh, highlights, Henry. Yes. Um, where are you now on your full-time full -time equivalents on the regular hire? Um, so we've hired uh, four out of five of eight open positions. So um, let me just pull up the spreadsheet. Uh, we have a conditional offer that hasn't that that we both we are hoping that will lead to a fifth hire. Um, our official FTE. is I think 22 and uh, the, the number of um, positions uh, it's like um, that we have open are roughly I think five FTE though there are eight positions because three of them are half time. So we're down from 22 by five ish. So that would be uh, 17. We're very excited that we've been allowed to recruit four additional empty positions and hope to be fully staffed. 
sometime. Full, yeah. Our full of staff, staff, full staff, staff is 22. Uh, yeah. 22. Got it. Okay. We also so employ the, a large the extra hires. Where where extra hires is very uh, flexible. Yeah. So so we would employ as many as 20 or 30 extra hires at any one time, sometimes more. We haven't been using them as much with, with the reduced capacity and reduced circulation. Um, so, so we, we have, uh, in our temp budget, that's in, uh, extra higher. Right. Uh, you know, a, a significant amount of like 170. So, so, uh, you know, it's underspent for this fiscal year, but I see that as kind of ramping up you know, in a huge way in our next year, because we're going to need a lot of people to shelf. The shelving of the books is all done by temporary workers. Uh, and we have we have been very conservative in bringing people back, given the kind of outlook of kind of con conserving, you know, in terms of what we've been through. Yes. Um, good. Thank you. Uh, another question on Marin Net. Yeah, you know, I usually have it every quarter as we review these documents. The the uh, amount of money uh, you're the head of the Marin Net, as I understand it, correct? No, I'm one of the board members of the consortial. Uh, we have a JPA, and it's and it's and it's kind of. Um, ruled by by a well, board the, for with the representatives question, basic, yeah. Basic, yeah i will basic be the chair have, who's got a leash on who's got a, a leash on the expenditures that marinette has which are, are we only pay a portion of it but it's got to be a substantial budget number Yes, uh, the, the costing formula is a matrix of three factors, population, uh, library circulation, and the size of the collection. And, and um, we're planning on redoing the JPA sometime soon, and it's been proposed to also um, include other factors that would make the distribution of costs slightly more advantageous to us, meaning we would pay less and other people would pay more. But for now, we're kind of locked in in terms of just the way the, the costs are distributed. But I have advocated for fiscal conservatism in terms of um, what we spend on software and um, our new delivery contract has come up. And that's a sort of an, an ongoing expense. And so while I'm a big advocate of conserving our resources, there's a limited amount of power that I have um, and all financial decisions have to be unanimous, uh, according to the JPA. Um, so, so the county is about 50%, we're 15%, and the other small cities are, are under 10%, more or less. But um, the, the biggest cost of that is staff. So we're paying for a, a yeah. consortial staff of like four people. Um, so they're there may be some ideas about like whether they actually serve the county more than the members. So maybe they should be paid for by, by in another way. But, but this is a sort of very complex issue to kind of unravel, but, but I, I assure you that I bring it up on a regular basis. <laughs> good, good for you, Henry. So yeah, we're working on it. Uh, other questions from the committee? The, the uh, back to my original. Oh, wait, Gail has one. Gail has one. No, Peter no. already spoke. Phyllis, I think you heard. Phyllis. Uh, so okay. If if we did you say we're paying fifteen percent of Marinda costs? Uh, roughly, yeah. The, the, the costs are apportioned by a cost 
interesting for me. The JPA is on, on the website. I could share you the link if you're so interested. Well, it looks like it's, the total contract is $2 million. Uh, The total contract for... Miranda. For... Uh, the cost every year, uh, I, I'd have to pull up, but but if your math is correct, uh, yeah, there's there's additional things like um, it's it's mostly uh, straight straight ahead divided. We pay link plus costs and some database costs, right. um, but y yeah, I I'd have to I don't want to commit to that number unless I pulled up the bill for the entire consortium budget. Well, I'm just taking the, the number you're showing yeah, and dividing it yeah. by 0.15 and you get over 2 million. Yeah, um, I think it could be 16 this year, but, you know, close enough. Oh, so I guess we get our money's worth because we're sharing a lot of other stuff. Uh, yeah, we, we particularly useful is the scenic connectivity that we get through them. We get like a gigabit uh, connection. Um, I think that the ebook collection is very useful and very cost effective and the trading of books back and forth between us. It's just that the, the, the support staff is working on a slightly earlier model in terms of like technology. And my opinion is that that could be configured differently. But um, in terms of the entire budget for MarinNet, I, I could get you the exact number but yeah but but it, it does sort of hit us in a way that i think because because the smaller libraries experience a very good economy of scale for it and the biggest library kind of owns it and and gets the most services we're we're in the middle so we don't get either of those things mm -hmm. but 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 um i think a different costing formula would radically change because uh, cities like Mill Valley, Bell Tib, uh, they pay uh, about half what we pay. Um, and so, you know, they have a smaller collection, Bell Tib does. No, no, actually they have the same size collection, but they have a smaller population. So, so the, the, the way the money is divided doesn't really reflect how much we use the system, but it's, you know, according to the rules that were set up. So, I mean, those need to be changed if this is actually gonna change. So, I mean, that, that was one of our main budget items from Marinette before COVID happened. But rewriting the JPA is kind of complex. I think lawyers would be involved, but yeah. Um, Th things are looking up. Uh, oh, Peter. Okay. Back to my uh, original question before you were uh, interrupted. What is the philosophy of the city to spend down the general fund? Be uh, it's just because it may go away, or uh, we want to show that we need all the money for next year to strengthen the budget for the library parcel tax stays with the library yes so the library needs to spend their money that's in the general fund or they lose it yeah uh what phyllis said but but i'd say um i i wouldn't speak for the philosophy of the of finance but because this year has been so uneven in terms of um having money not having money spend measure d don't spend measure d the fact that at the end of the year, it seems like we have more money than we thought it needs to be spent this year. And if we spend it, then, then, you know, we, 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 it's, it's fiscally more responsible to spend that money, which is set on a yearly cycle of fiscal year by law and by all this other stuff. Whereas the measure D money keeps, keeps accumulating and moving and is not subject to those restrictions. Yeah. And so, so just from I, that, I agree with the concept. When you improve, you spend it. There was a need, and you spend it all. Then you can work on your when you do your budgets for the subsequent years. 
Yeah. Uh, normally you would, but but the the volatility of the recent year I think is greater than it's been since like 1920ish maybe. Sorry. Sorry. But like yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. No mas. So, um, where are we on the agenda here? Let me pull that up. Okay. So, has everyone got a chance to speak? Yes. And um, there's no public. Let's just double check. No, there there are no okay. public comments. Um. Shout out to Peter for, for his participation on the board. Did, did uh, and, and um, I think um, you, you may be aware that there's two positions that, that their terms are expiring. I, we, we briefly talked about this in the beginning, but you know, we expect the, the process to be a smooth one. Um, I appreciate all of you for participating in this. We're very lucky to have the Measure D fund to uh, augment <laughs> some, to, to our library uh, operations. Um, so yeah, we wanna acknowledge committee member uh, Peter Lee at this time because we recognize that this is your last meeting and wanna thank you for all the time and effort that you've put into this committee and Phyllis, you you as well. Um, I am under the impression that Phyllis, you are reapplying and Peter, you are not. So we wanted to make sure that we had our opportunity to say thank you, Peter, um, for everything that you've done to support Measure D taxpayers and, and our efforts as a library. And Phyllis, we wish you the best of luck in reapplying um, and we'll keep our fingers crossed for you. But we wanna thank you as well, um, just in case, um, we don't get to see you next month. We want to thank you for all the time and effort that you have spent in supporting Measure D and making sure that the taxpayers are heard and well represented as well. And look forward to crossing our fingers that we see you again. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you from Peter. Uh, and I appreciate the uh, camaraderie and the dedication of the staff. But uh, we also want to be sure that the library gets continues to get its fair share of the city budget. It sure will. Um, and you know, I, I think we mentioned this earlier. I know, Peter, you asked the question about the staffing and what positions are being held. We have gotten all the green lines that we could possibly want um, in March. And we were told that out of the eight positions that we could start hiring five of them. I think we were one of the first departments to have that many positions open at all one time and being able to fill them. So we're thrilled um, that obviously the city council as well as city management supports the library as well as you do um, and understands the mission that the library has in, in regards to the community and serving them. We are also proposing that the three um, remaining positions that were frozen during COVID are reopened and we're able to recruit for those and all, everything that we've heard so far, it looks like it's gonna happen. So we're very excited about that. And honestly, I think it's because Terrific. of your board and all the other boards that have been strong advocates for us that that is possible. Terrific, keep it up. It's been my pleasure. Thank you Thanks, again. Peter. It's been my pleasure getting to know you and um, thank right. you for for being willing to take over um, a department that merged with another department and being able to kind of mentor me through this process. It's, it's been a delight and very educational for me as well. Thank you. Henry, do you have anything else or? Uh, that concludes our agenda for tonight. Thank, thank you, Peter and Phyllis. Thank you, Gail. Uh, we were planning to meet next quarter and I will um, contact the committee members to set that up. We don't have a specific date. We've been going more quarterly as, as people are available. Um, you know, the fiscal year does end in a week. 
So, um, you know, we should have the fourth quarter numbers maybe in a month-ish from then, maybe a little more. And so um, I will look forward to, to seeing the remaining members on the next call. And uh, we don't really have any information on whether we're going to go in person or what time, but city council has, they're going to be in person or hybrid indefinitely, Susan, or? What we're hearing is that the city council will be holding their first in-person city council meeting beginning in September, and most of the boards and commissions will follow suit. We are, this meaning the city is looking into hybrid options, because I think we all found out during COVID for a lot of people who uh, have transportation accessibility issues or family commitments or work commitments and they're unable to attend in person that actually some of these Zoom meetings have been a benefit for some participation. So I think the city council is hoping for, um, for a city staffers to come up with a hybrid solution for both in person and people can still participate uh, via Zoom or some, un, uh, some other um, uh, platform. So Thank we're excited you. about that. Yes. So um, happy Thursday, everyone. Oh, so oh wait, I just Gail. Want to, yeah, yeah. Just to, thank you for doing this on a Thursday. This works out well for me. I don't know how it is for everybody else, but it's a little away from the Monday, Tuesday rush where all the other meetings are. So <laughs> yeah, it works well. We're open till six uh, at the library. So it kind of works well here. But thank you, Gail. We, we aim to please. <laughs> the more the merrier yeah so any so final you. thoughts no okay good night everybody thank you bye bye, -bye. Thank you all have a happy fourth of july <laughs> thanks phyllis thanks susan thanks gail thanks gender, thanks, gender. all right <laughs>